Good evening, one and all. I, Dr. Swati Chauhan, Associate Professor, Department of English, Manav Rachna International Institute of Research and Studies, would like to welcome you all for this seven days International Faculty Development Program. I feel privileged to introduce the first speaker of today, uh, Dr. Fides Del Castillo. I'm happy to introduce her. So here I'm giving you a formal introduction of Dr. Fides Del Castillo. I hope I'm pronouncing the name in correct way. Is it Fides, ma'am? It's Fides. Okay, it's Fides. It's okay. Thank you so much. So here I'm announcing the formal uh, introduction. Uh, Dr. Fides Del Castillo uh, is working in the Department of Theology and Religious Education, De La Salle University, Manila, Philippines. She is working as a curriculum monitoring and policy implementation in the department. She has a vast experience of uh, education in research and academia. She has conducted research and academic engagements as a teacher's theology subject. She has also mentored graduate and undergraduate students. She has worked as an associate dean in the College of Liberal Arts, De La Salle University, Manila. Then she has worked as a graduate studies coordinator in De La Salle University, Manila. She has also worked as an assistant professor in the same university. She has worked as a coordinator, community service and faculty Deacon International School. She has worked as a director, Lesselian Pastoral De La Salle, Kenlu Bank. Uh, she has also worked as a coordinator as religious education, social concern, and campus ministry, Dila Sale, Kentu Bank. He has also worked as assistant principal at Dila Sale, Kenling, uh, since many years. And uh, if I talk about the publication, she has a rich publication. She has published many good books. She has written many good books, textbooks, and she is editor of in number of books. She has participated in many international and national conferences. She has a good um, area of research also. So uh, I can see a big uh, profile of ma'am. And uh, so I will take too much time to read all the things mentioned in the profile. So without taking much time, I would like to welcome ma'am Peters. And I would like that she will take the session because we all are so curious to listen her. And yes, I know all the participants are waiting that because uh, they are, uh, I'm pretty sure that this session is going to give us some new insights and some new information. So we all are very curious to know. So here I request um, Dr. Fides, please take this session. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Swati. Um, that's a very generous um, introduction. Thank you so much. And good evening to every one of you. And uh, I'm really happy to be here with you. So uh, first, I would like to thank um, Dr. Regine and to Dr. Mutmaina for inviting me in your conference. And I'm really happy to have Akababayan, who will also be um, speaking with you after me. That's um, Dr. Lucero. I'm really happy to to meet all of you. Now, allow me to share my screen. So let me just um, share with you my presentation. So um, the title of my presentation is on the impact of ICT in education. So currently, um, since the pandemic has started in 2020, um, De La Salle University, um, or the Philippines rather, we started our lockdown by March 15, 2020. And since then, we have been using technology and online classes in education. To be very honest with you, we have not, um, I personally have not entered the campus yet since last year. So it's been a year that I have been um, doing online classes. All the meetings are via um online platform and 
just yesterday, we had the international conference in Manila, and we have invited a lot of participants. We have actually around 300 plus participants all over the world. And um, we have um, two, um, two um, speakers coming from America and another one from India, from Bangalore. So he, she is Dr. Atola. So um, Lung Kumar, she's a very um, good researcher from India. And um, that's why India or Indian people, they are very close to my heart because a lot of them are my friends. So again, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. Now, allow me to begin with my presentation by asking several questions. The first question that I'd be asking everyone is, what is information and communication technologies? So I think we have to first identify and I, um, see, no? um, try to define what do we mean by ICT so that we will be able to really grasp and understand what it's all about. So um, it says here that it's a broader term for information technology. So it refers to all communication technologies that includes internet, wireless network, cell phones, computers, software, middleware, video conferencing, social networking, and other media applications and services. So we are um, very happy, no? We are actually, um, it's really good to, to have um, our Google Meet um, online because this is part of ICT, no? Interformation and Communication Technologies. The second question that I'd like to ask is, why is it important? Why do you think um, it's, it's part and parcel of our daily living? So it, um, it permeates, ICT actually permeates all aspects of life, including providing newer, better, and quicker ways for people to interact. Um, the mere fact that we are here together, we are coming from different places, we, will, we are able to interact with one another and engage and be able to network, to seek help, to gain access to information and learn. So I think the importance of ICT is so huge that it actually permeates all aspects, the different parts of our own life. And um, to continue, I'd like to share with you some essential facts about ICT. So if we will be looking on history, um, ENIAC was the first electronic computer. And if we have our own um, smartphones, if we have our own laptops, before, no, the first electronic computer actually weighed over 27 tons. That's really huge. Even the parts of the computer really are um, heavy. The computer mouse was invented in 1964. And um, one fact about it is, is that it, the first one was made of wood. Right now, there are, we have uh, metal, we have plastics, no? and um, it's actually more efficient. No? The next um, essential fact about ICT, uh, if we talk about viruses, the first computer virus was created in 1971. It was called the creeper. And another fact about um, virus is that, according to McAfee, no, 100,000 new malware programs are created every day. So that's how um, a, a really a big, a, a large um, chunk of um, viruses. And 92% of malware comes by email. So think twice before opening attachment. Um, that's why. Um, it's very important that we have to be critical whenever we are opening our emails. Another essential fact about ICT is on password. So until 2012, password was the most common password. And right now, kindly double check your passwords, um, the most common password is actually 123456. So if that's your password, better yet, change it to another password, okay? And another one is 59% of people, that's above um, half of the 
um, the population have just one password which they use everywhere. So, um, of course, um, as human beings, no, we usually have, um, for, for us to be reminded easily of the password, we will be using one password for all other, um, let's say, social media account or email. But I think it's more secure if we will be having several passwords and we can just um, place it in our, um, in our file, okay? The next one is another essential fact about ICT is on emails. Almost 3 million emails are sent every, every second. So if, for example, in your own work, try to check how many emails you receive every day in your own um, universities or institutions. And if we will be summing them, them up, that's around um, 250 billion a day. And on average, people spend 5.4 hours a day checking emails. So I think um, we all experience that because we are all in the workforce. And um, communication is really important, especially for academicians, for scholars, for professors. Another um, essential fact about ICT on emails is 28% of emails are spam. That's why if we will be looking and checking our own spam, no, um, a lot of them are um, placed no, in, in, those, um, in that um, um, area. In 2008, 93% of all emails were, were spam. And then Hotmail and Rocketmail were the first free email providers both launched in 1986, or 1996 rather. If we will be going on social media, um, on average, we spend 142 minutes a day on social media. So try to check how many times we go to Facebook or Instagram. And um, right now, currently, Facebook is the most popular social media site. It has over 2.5 billion users so it's really a lot if you want to communicate or to um, engage ourselves to other people or to connect with other people we can actually you know facebook them um, the word google no can be also um, placed in in facebooking okay another one on companies so 92 percent of web de developers are men this is according to a recent survey, okay? And Microsoft is the largest software company. In 2020, it made $138.6 um, billion. So this, it's really a huge amount. So if you are in the IT industry, you know, um, this is the um, most you know, um, efficient time for you to be, to be in this um, industry because uh, almost all are actually using... ITC, uh, using technology. And on internet, um, this is according to study, um, by 2025, a total of 75.44 billion devices will be connected to the internet. Even our shopping, even um, all the transactions that we are actually doing, if before we have to go to the bank in order to pay, right now we can just click our app Know, our bank app and be able to, to connect. Um, sometimes, I don't know if you have experienced this with, the, um, with young children in your own family. They cannot go out or they cannot um, join their parents because they are afraid that the internet will be, you know, they cannot connect to internet if they are outside the house. Okay? So here in the Philippines, most of the children would really be staying at home even the, during the pre-pandemic um, because they would want to always connect in the internet. So I think that's, um, that's the phenomenon, okay? And um, for this is actually, a re again, a research, you know, for all people, we spend an average of six hours and 42 minutes online each day. Um, actually, if we will be looking at our um, meetings and conferences, if we will be adding that up, you know, um, there's actually more, especially now that we are having um, online classes, online meetings, and work from home. 
situations. Now, let's try to go now to the meat of our talk. No? So, what is ICT in education? If we will be looking um, directly and engaging um, ICT in the educational system, no? it says here that ITC um, or ICT in education use information and um, communications technology to support, okay, to enhance and optimize the delivery of information. So everything that we are actually um, giving or um, extending to our students are actually being optimized. And um, the information that we have to, to give them no, um, are all communicated via um, ICT. Now, um, some of us, no, um, if before we have the usual um, hardbound um, copies of the books, right now, um, some would prefer to have the PDF copy or the soft copy because um, it's easier for, for, our, for our, the students to, to get and even the delivery of information can just be, you know, seen in their own, um, in their own tablet or in their own laptop. And worldwide research has shown that ICT can lead to improved student learning and better teaching methods. So um, even in um, other countries, no, they, they really try to optimize this, um, this uh, way, no? especially in teach the teaching methods. So how ICT can help students? Now let's try to focus on our students. No? Um, uh, right now, I'm handling actually um, college students, undergraduate students, but I also have um, students who are taking their graduate studies in masters and PhDs. Um, we have a small school here in our place, and we are um, also have um, little kids. So really, all of them are maximizing their time in front of their laptops and try to get as much as possible you know, all the education that they will be needing every time that they will be with their their Sorry for that. Okay. So ICT is currently being used in education to assist students to learn more effectively by providing teachers with access to a wide range of new pedagogy. So what do we mean by this? Um, students, you know, they try to... Um, they are actually they learn faster right now. You know? um, sometimes they are you know they they know better um, how to use an app than their own teachers, and it's very important that instructors teachers will be ahead of them and be able to um, see how they will be able to use different strategies using online um, platform and. To be very honest, there are a wide range of new um, pedagogy, okay? So let's try to move on. Um, how will ICT can help us in the daily? Um, in every day, you know, ICT has contributed a lot to change our everyday life. So such as letters to the email. If before we have the snail mail, right now in just one click, we will be able to um, have um, the information and send it to the recipient. And um, just to share with you, two days ago when we started the international conference, because our speaker is from the United States and uh, um, the time you know, difference is quite you know, difficult, it's very confused, confusing. So what um, happened was the first plenary speaker who is supposed to, to talk in the first day of our um, in our conference, was not able to to join us because um, the speaker thought that it will be the next day. So um, we were actually panicking. It's about you know there are a lag of two to three minutes, and um, one um, another, a friend of ours who will be speaking the next day emailed us. Would you like me to step in? And we said, okay. So within two to three minutes, we were able to change the schedule 
because of email. So that's how important um, technology, how important ICT. And we were actually laughing at, at the end, no? and we were saying that it's quite um, an intense um, conference, but at the end, we were able to um, push through, and everything went well. Another contribution no, um, of ICT is um, market shopping to online. So again, um, some of us would have to go to the market, to a certain boutique, or to, to somewhere, but right now, everything can be done online. There are some applications um, in the computer or in the, um, in, in, you know, in our own cell phones. And you just need to um, put in the shopping cart, everything, and it will be delivered to you immediately. Okay? Even um, applications for food. So everything can, can be done online. And... Um, it also helps, you know, especially now that we are in the pandemic, so that you know the um, contraction of virus would be um, limited and it will actually help us even in the public health. Um, classroom learning to e-learning. So instead of going to um, the classroom and have um, the face-to-face -face, you know, um, teaching and learning, right now we have our own e-learning. Um, whenever I interview some of our students, I ask them, um, which one do you prefer to be inside the classroom or to have your education online? Um, at the beginning, no, during the, um, the onset of the pandemic, they were saying that they, would, they really missed um, the face-to-face -face and they would want to go back to that. But along the days along this month um, some of them were saying that they were used to online learning and they preferred it to to have it um, like this in this current setup because um, time no um, they there is lesser time for them to prepare no um, even the way they travel no it's um, easier for them because uh, they're within their own homes then um, this okay. Um, this paper presents the effects of ICT as home and domestic activity, social networking, education, health, commerce, um, banking, and employment. So it means that even in all other aspects of our you know life, ICT actually contributed a lot. No, in our own home, um, in our own domestic activities. Um, if we want to do some exercise because we gain weight already, we just go to YouTube and check which one is the most um, efficient exercise in order for us to lose weight. Okay? Uh, even in social networking, if we need to contact a friend, we use um, the Messenger or the Viber or WhatsApp. So there are so many um, networks that we can actually, you know, um, communicate with and for education um, there are a lot of you know instant um, articles um, to be very honest with you um, during the pandemic um, I, I tried to um, look at different resources if before I have to go to the library of the university in order for me to look for the books um, right now there are so many um, online articles that we can actually look into and um, we can learn. So even in education and even in research, ICT has contributed a lot. And health, of course, um, right now everything is um, worldometer, for example. Okay, and um, even the 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 numbers of you know. Um, which one, which places are, um, has the highest, higher risk of being contaminated with, um, with, with this disease. So everything can be seen you know, in technology, commerce, banking, employment, and so on. The next one is, I'd like to discuss also some ob obstacles in ICT. Of course, we have looked at the, its importance. We also tried to look at, you know, its contribution in our daily life. But 
sometimes we have also to look at the different challenges or obstacles in ICT use because um, if we want to be very, you know, if we want to be good in something, you know, um, we have to look at the pros and cons in order for us to, to perfect it, right? So the first obstacle in ICT use is the implementation failure. So what do we mean by this? The first one is lack of access and resources. So there are some places, still some places, who do not have any access at all, or there are lack of access and resources. So um, at first, um, when we are starting the you know, um, online classes, there are so many students who cannot enter the Zoom or en enter the Google Meet because the internet is really bad in their area. Even the resources of you know, trying to access resources, um, it's very limited. So this can be an obstacle in ICT use. Um, the second one is absence of shared vision. There are some who are, you know, um, more um, um, adult or seasoned um, professors who do not share you know, um, the same vision as those of the millennials. So there might be, you know, um, generation gaps. So this can also be an obstacle in the use of ICT. And of course, you no, know, we have the poor planning and leadership. If the administration is not prepared for, for the changes in ICT, um, that would be a very big problem in the institution. Even in um, decision-making, king of what to use, what resources to be used by the students and the teachers. So um, these are some of the challenges that needs to be addressed. The next one is lack of training for both teachers and students. I think this is more um, seen when we are starting you know, the online teaching because um, all of us were caught off guard by, by what's happening right now. Even um, the lockdowns, the different lockdowns, some of the teachers are really were struggling at the beginning to... Um, on how to use um, technology, on how to use the different platforms, and even students. But since we have been used to it, we are trying to be learning. No? We are actually learning um, a lot from all the experiences that we, we had. So what are the remedies in ICT use? Um, the first one that I have uh, placed here is to set a clear vision in the use of ICT in education. So it should be starting from the administrators. It should be starting from the key decision makers in order for, you know, the institution to implement what is supposed to be um, done in the educational system. Because if there are no clear vision, within the higher admin, it would be very difficult for the students, for the parents, for the, the, stu for the teachers to um, have their own specific ICT. You know? um, maybe the teachers will be using different platforms if there is no um, decisive um, decision that can be um, done within the institution. So there should be a you know, a clear goal for this one. And another one, no, is to, number two is to set a schedule for proper training for teachers and students. So in order for us, no, for our, you know, our spaces, our, our institutions to have um, specific um, remedies for ICT use, there should be proper training of teachers. Um, there should be a separate training for the teachers, for the admin, for the students, and for the parents, okay? So because they all have different needs. They all have different, um, you know, um, different methods also, no? Um, for them to, to learn the different, um, the use of that um, specific um, ICT. So these are very important. 
um, if we will be looking at the goal of ICT in the pandemic, okay, um, number one, we can actually look at how it provides us with up-to-date information that is needed to safeguard public health. And everything that we have, um, all the information have been um, given to us through the information and communication technology. Um, it can be seen in our own, you know, um, television, in our internet, uh, in our, um, in all the, uh, the um, news, no? used by um, the different uh, mobiles. And another one, um, another role of ICT in the pandemic is um, communication with loved ones while in quarantine. Um, a lot um, of our, I don't know if you also have experienced this, that um, friends, family, and loved ones have been um, very affected with what's happening in the society, in the community, and communication with the loved one is really important. And ICT have been very useful. If we need um, someone to talk to, we just need to communicate. Um, I have a, a brother who is actually living in the United States, and every now and then we have to um, check um, what's happening with, with, with our own family. And if we want to talk in real time, we just need to check the messenger. We just need to use the iPhone and um, we will be connected immediately. So I think um, communication is very, very important, especially now in this era. And um, next one is um, the role of ICT you know, um, in online education. Um, it became possible. Uh, children didn't stop learning. They continued learning through online platform, through um, communication. And I think this is um, the beautiful thing that um, our students will be learning in this era because definitely in this century um, only this period no that uh, our the people would be experiencing this and this is a unique era in in this century so i think um resiliency of children no um trying to cope especially with uh, during the trying times um it would be very very um helpful um, especially now that we we have um, um, we have uh, different places to to learn with, so the role of ICT is very important. Now, this will be my last um, slide. Okay, so um, the role of ICT in the pandemic is it gives job jobs to so many people while at home. Um, for those who have not um, been working, you know, especially um, because of, um, you know, because of the, um, they are afraid to be contaminated or to be contracted with the disease, um, being at home have, uh, has that self of security, um, sense of security within, within the, the family, within the person. Um, in research, no, in recent research, um, around 45% of the people in the world actually lost their jobs because of the closure of, you know, um, institutions, um, closure of different um, food industries, no, uh, travel are restricted. So everything now are actually going online. So it gives a lot of people hope so that they could give um food no on their own table and again no ICT have been um very very helpful in so many ways so i hope that um as we continue um engaging with one another um sometimes we have i, I it, this is also my reflection sometimes i would actually be very um um quite i don't know quite tired especially if i have the whole day being in front of the computer. But to be very honest, I have to be very grateful because I have this, um, this opportunity to engage 
with um, other people and at the same time protecting myself from um, from being sick so I hope that as we continue learning from one another um, let's continue to be grateful with what we have and at the same time um, try to count our blessings and see that um, the most important thing now is um, to be happy to um, to be with to be safe for our family and for our um, dreams in life so with that thank you so much for listening and um, well um, again thank you for um, inviting me here Uh, thank you, Dr. Fides. It was really wonderful session, and it was very informative. Actually, you know, um, those since always, ICT tools were so useful for us. But nowadays, during this pandemic, when we all are connected with each other with this ICT tools only with internet and with this, uh, you know, so many uh, platforms are there to which we can uh, be connected, and even in the teaching um, uh, you know profession we all are able to justify our jobs actually i would say and the teaching is possible because of this ict tools only so i have learned a lot from your session and i'm sure that all the participants have taken many insights from your session it was a wonderful session and if i see the chat box so um, ma'am you know the chat box is full of appreciation. Many people are appreciating that. Yes, it was very informative session. It was a wonderful session. I can see many, um, uh, you know, appreciation and many compliments there. So I cannot see any query in the chat box because, you know, the session was so clear that we do not have any uh, doubt and any query because doubt and queries are that time when the things are not clear. But you have cleared everything. So you have not left any scope for any doubt and the query. So thank you so much, ma'am, for giving us so much time and so many information. Thank you so much.